Jerion Ely had as good of a season as a true freshman can have for Ole Miss in 2019. 722 rushing yards, uh, six touchdowns, almost seven yards per carry. Not to mention he had a touchdown through the air and also a kick return for a touchdown. Brian, when I talk about this dude's stats and I watch his highlights this offseason, I can't tell you how excited I am to see him run it up on opposing defenses this year. Yeah, you think that carry number is probably definitely going up with Scotty Phillips out of the backfield. Big explosive runner. I can't I don't know how many touchdowns I couldn't look it up off the top of my head that well before we started recording of over thirty or forty yards, but look, it feels like you know, three or four of the six touchdowns he had. You mentioned almost seven yards of carry. Explosive runner. How he's used in Lane Kiffin's offense next year, he and Jeff Lebby is going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Absolutely. You you look at those those rushing stats a year ago and we talk about Rich Rod and how much he meant for the run game. It was it was really nice to see that from from everybody. I mean, obviously John Rice Plumley led the way. Over a thousand rushing yards for him. He had twelve touchdowns on the ground, but after that it was so good to see all three running backs for Ole Miss. You talk about Scotty Phillips, who's a senior, Jerry on and Snoop Connor, another true freshman. Really uh, you know, it, it put up numbers that we hadn't seen, like I said, in, in a long time. Uh, but you mentioned Levy and Kiffin. These two guys are given so much credit for the work they do in the passing game. Um, obviously, they have a great history of working with quarterbacks, but we can't forget about their history of working with running backs. I mean, Lane Kiffin has coached guys like Derrick Henry and Reggie Bush. Jeff Levy, you look back at UCF, really balanced offenses for the Knights. I mean, they were averaging around over 300 yards passing and over 200 yards rushing uh, when he was at UCF a year ago. So a good balance in his offenses. And you go as far as back to Baylor when he was an assistant coach, I believe he had five years where he coached five 1,000-yard rushers and was even named Football Scoops running back coach of the year in 2013. So that's obviously really promising when well, you have a former five-star running back in Jerry on Ely who's coming off a really nice freshman season to now get paired with these two guys. And then to put a cherry on top, Brian, you got Kevin Smith, who is arguably one of the best to ever play college football as a running back. He set the FBS record with 29 touchdowns uh, when he played at UCF. And then when he coached FAU, Devin Singletary, his running back, ties his record. So you have all these like bright coaches when it comes to the run game paired with this former five-star who's looking to take the next step feels like a really good combination yeah it's a deep position too and you mentioned snoop connor kind of being the guy that made it that way last year a a really late ad for Ole miss in that class two years ago comes in and makes an impact immediately really kind of made isaiah willard the odd man out because you'll remember when scotty phillips hurt his ankle at the end of 2018 willard got some serious action from that texas a&m game on but you know, that, that room got deeper. He ended up kind of being the odd man out. You had two more guys this year in the recruiting class in Henry Parrish and Kentrell Bullock. They've got some depth to work with this to work with at this position. I can't talk today. And it's going to be interesting to see how the carries are dispersed. I think you'll see, obviously, Ely kind of turn into that more of a bell cow type role. But don't sleep on you know, Snoop Connor as well and see how that role grows going into the 2020 season. I think all of that helps Ely. Like, not having to be the number one, the only guy, you know, like if, if Jerry on Ely was like, oh, okay, he's the elite running back. He's the only one we've got. It would limit his production a little bit. But I think because you have so many capable runners on that offense, including John Rice Plumley at quarterback, uh, I just think it opens up so much more for Jerry on Ely this year. And a guy that already did that much in a, a true freshman season, it just feels like he's just going to take the next step. But what is the next step, Brian? Are we talking over a thousand rushing yards from this season? What do you think that next step's going to be? Yeah, a thousand, twelve hundred yards, kind of get into that double digit touchdown mark. You know, Lane Kiffin's not necessarily scared of, of feeding the guy a lot. I mean, I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day about Derrick Henry's, I think, 2016 Iron Bowl. Maybe I have that wrong but he ended up with like 46 carries and 220 something yards. It's one of the more, like when you go back and look at the box score, just like shocking performances because it kind of just crept up on you. I don't think we'll necessarily see a lot of that. Ole Miss has a lot of depth at that position. I don't think you're going to see Jerry on Ely towed it 40 something times in a game, but I do think you know the, the volume of carries will increase. 
you know, yardage increase. I doubt he stays at that six, seven yard a carry range just because I think the volume of carries will increase. But yeah, I think you get into that 1,200 yard range, maybe 10, 11 touchdowns. And, and I think that's kind of how you make the jump from year one to year two. Naturally, when you're that highly rated, you know, as, as a recruit, when you're coming into college, there's going to be a lot of eyes on you. But even I didn't expect the type of season he had a year ago. You know, I, I was like, it's going to take him a little bit of time. He's a baseball kid as well. So that'll take some of his time. And no, it didn't take him any time. I mean, he came in and he was ready to go. Uh, we talk about how much improvements we think he'll make on the ground. I think he's just going to continue to become more of a threat in the in the special teams game as well. I mean, you know, I, I can see him continue to be an option for them out of the backfield as well as a pass catcher. But I'm more excited about seeing him take the next step on special teams as well. Yeah, I agree. And I think he would have been more of a factor out of the backfield last year. And I think they probably could have used him more than they did. Just the passing game was such a disaster, which we've kind of covered in previous videos. So that may be the kind of the most interesting part of next year is kind of how he's used out of the backfield. Do they use him more often? Do they split him out in the slot a little bit? It's uh, it's going to be fascinating. Absolutely, man. It's uh, I, I've watched a lot of Jerry on Ely highlights this off season. I, I was putting together a a highlight tape of his uh, about two months ago and I got to watch every single run from this year and I was like oh my goodness you know you forget when, when your team isn't that good you forget how many good moments they have like going back and watching all those John Rice Plumley highlights and Jerry on Ely highlights it gets me really excited for next year uh, because like I mentioned all those elite coaches with the histories they've had working with running backs paired with talented athletes it, it just feels like for the first time in a long time uh, you know, things are things are looking up for Ole Miss. Yeah, I mean, if you hadn't had the coaching staff attrition and if you'd have let the same staff in place coming into this season, the selling point would have been the young guys and what they did on offense last year, particularly through the ground. You know, it would have been Connor and Plumley and Ely. Like, that was kind of your selling point. And obviously, injecting some new energy in the program and hiring Kiffin and that staff kind of overshadowed that a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, that that's definitely kind of your jumping off point with that young core uh, heading into the 2020 season. Absolutely. And and we, like we mentioned, obviously, the passing game, uh, you know, if, if they find the right quarterback, should be there under Kiffin and Levy and what we know about these two guys. But the running game is just as important uh, for their offense. And I, I'm going to keep saying this. You cannot have better people coaching running backs as well uh, the way Ole Miss has right now on its coaching staff. It's really well put together. Uh, for all your information leading up to the season, and of course, once the season starts, remember to subscribe to the Ole Miss Spirit. We have free content like this video, but there's a lot of other paid content as well that only subscribers get. You guys are going to want to get that. Go to omspirit.com. He's Brian Scott Rippey. I'm Sudi Upadea. We'll see you guys next time.